Grace and Peace. It is the 26th of June, and we continue to talk about grace this week. So from 1 Corinthians 15, these words attributed to the Apostle Paul. By the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God, which was with me. So culturally, we tend to see folks who are incredibly skilled at self-promotion, whether it could be in social media or in school or however. They want to make themselves just so successful. And I'm not going to pretend that this has not leaked over into the church. It really has. And what's interesting, fun, if you will, is that the Apostle Paul is, he's bragging, he's boasting, but he's trying to do it in such a way that while he's saying he labored more than all the others, it should point to Christ Jesus. It wasn't really him that should get the credit. It should point to the grace of God that's working in him. That what he's really doing is bragging on the grace of God that works in him. And that talking about or bragging on the grace of God, that's coming forth with humility because it's about God, not about who you are, but through God in you. When I was growing up, um, on the south side of St. Louis. The church where I grew up, it's going to sound funny to say it was, a, it was a point of pride that folks didn't talk about what they did. That's German piety, right? But what you did, you just did. So you worked for the church, you worked for the neighborhood, you worked for your family, you were known by your good works. And that can lead to its own thing, but it just was its thing. And there really was that kind of sense of camaraderie and it was how particular churches were known. It was their reputation. If you had a community that came together and everybody was working toward one common goal, another common goal. And this example that I have, and maybe it sticks in my mind so clearly because it's one of the very last pieces that was happening before my dad died. It didn't matter to him if someone was a member of the church not a member of the church, if they're part of the community, meaning the local neighborhood community, if they were there, he was there. So he was known as just the pastor who would visit if you called, if you were walking the neighborhood, he would chat with you. And he served that church for 20, well, literally served until the day he died because the night he finished a meeting, he uh, passed away and there it was. But what happened shortly before he died is apparently he had a long ongoing friendship with one of the the men in the neighborhood and not a member of the church and this was not a wealthy neighborhood it was not a poor neighborhood it's just an average kind of neighborhood but uh when the gentleman had passed away he left his estate his will to the church because of the ministry he had received from the pastor from the congregation he had attended the fish fries the church held and the like the amount of the estate was leaked out um and so folks were just saying you know oh surely you visited because you knew how much he was worth surely you visited and the conversation just went around it's just like no you visit because they're here and if I visited, the real question is why, why were you not visiting? This is what we're called to do. And so could it be that if 
whatever is endowed to the church, could we not be setting up ministry so that more lives are reached, more lives are touched? Grace, that understanding, and I love that the congregation itself, the name of the church was Grace, right? Grace is being given something that you never deserved, have never earned, that you can't buy at any price. So to know that a congregation that didn't do a particular visitation or whatever, isn't it? It's just amazing to me to say it, nothing in grace is ever earned, right? It's pure gift. And to have a particular legacy that you endow with grace to a congregation named Grace, but for all of us, are we not given opportunities in our life to extend grace, extend kindness, to go above and beyond, to reach those anywhere in our lives. And I listened to Pastor Scott's devotional today, which is the 25th, and that powerful story of, of how we tend to just cut somebody off or to draw those lines so quickly. And God never does that. God is always extending grace. So if someone's a member of the church, what difference does that make? They're a member of the neighborhood. If someone's a member of the neighborhood, what difference does that make? They're a part of the wider community. If they're not a part of our community, what difference does that make? They're a part of the city. If they're not a part of our city, what difference? Do you see where I'm going with this? Otherwise it gets just really long. But they're a member of the human race. Or if we're not talking about the human race, they're part of God's global creation because we're talking about the environment. So that grace, it's never deserved. It's pure gift. And we have been given this gift of grace. Having received, why can't we? Why don't we take today as an opportunity to extend that gift? To someone else. Today is such a beautiful day to reach out with grace, with love, mercy, compassion, forgiveness. It's a perfect day for that. Thanks be to God. Amen. 